Live from the universe, welcome to Spiritual Awakening with Dr. Aaron. It's time to claim your birthright of prosperity, vitality, and love. So grab your tea or coffee because together we're awakening the world. May you live your truth. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That was the one quote from the Bible that made sense to me. I grew up as somebody who was pretty much anti-religion. And so my invitation for you today, if you're somebody who's been seeking spirituality, that truly loves spirituality, maybe you've had enlightenment moments, you've been meditating for years, you've you know done a lot of different seminars and maybe even had coaches and things like that, but you're ready for something more. You're ready for even more of a deep dive. Or maybe you're somebody who was born into a religious upbringing and you have only learned the Bible from a really traditional standpoint, then this podcast is for you as well. The intention of this podcast is to break on down from a metaphysical standpoint, the Bible, Genesis and the creation. We're going to break this on down. I'm so incredibly honored to take this journey with you. I'm Dr. Aaron, Dr. Divinity and metaphysical minister, uh, founder of New Thought Global and Society, with the intention truly and truly to develop world-renowned spiritual leaders. I truly believe that we must understand all the teachings to truly be able to not be ignorant in the world. That there are so many incredible truths in the Bible. The Bible is a profound story of you. It is the biography of you, how you created the universe. It is stories of great laws and how all the different different scripts and scriptures of your life, all the different characters that you're going to play. And so in this, in understanding Genesis, may we understand, may we understand how we create with the power of mind. Genesis breaks on down through the six days of creation, how we created this thing called life. So let's do this thing. So I just want to say that I'll never forget the day, the day that the Bible truly came into my life. I was really somebody who would almost laugh at people that were into the Bible and into the concept of Jesus saving them. And as I remember kind of going down my track, remember there's an actual day that I decided that I was going to open my heart and my mind to the Bible. And in that moment, I remember I was sitting there and I just remember this one quote, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And in that one quote, I thought, just because of that one quote, it may, it's, a, it's a seed that planted in my heart that knew that there was wisdom beyond wisdom in this one book. And I just know with my heart that day, forever forward, has opened me up to so much greater wisdom. It's like layers and layers of wisdom. And I'm so incredibly excited. So let's do this thing, you guys. So. The Bible is your biography, is the greatest story ever told. It's actually how you created the universe and the stories of the great universal laws, okay? But before we get into the sixth day of creation, I want you to just ask yourself, kind of check yourself, right? Because you can interpret the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic teachings and writing. And the reason why it's prophetic and why it's divinely written is because it will be interpreted by your level of consciousness okay so you get it so if you're somebody who's closed-minded you basically will not receive the wisdom if you're somebody who's open-minded you will receive great wisdom so the question for you is are you reading it from a perspective of being the effect of life or are you reading it from the perspective of actually being the creator are you reading it from being you know separated and segregated in your race or sex or color or age or whatever or are you reading it from oneness okay so in this i invite us all to take a deep breath in through the nose and exhaling out i just ask that we open our heart and mind to the christ consciousness within that same consciousness that is the buddha consciousness and all the consciousness because there's only one consciousness which is love which is growth which is god which is good and in this i know that in these stories, in these profound stories of the Bible, may we know and be revealed to thyself. May we understand that the teachings have been here all along because truth is truth. We don't find truth. Truth, it is already here. It's in us. It's in every cell of who we are. And in this, I just say, may we spiritually awaken to the truth of who we are. May we restore our divine powers. May we live with such passion and purpose that our cup runneth over. 
May we be the change we want to see in the world. And may we be the second coming of Christ, which is the second coming of you, revealing and awakening to your true self. And so I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I receive all the greatness as together we say. And so it is. Okay, let's do this thing. So let's do this. The six days of creation, right? This is really the evolution of consciousness, right? So each day, you can say it represents a thousand years or a billion years or whatever. But the truth is, is that each day of creation is really an evolution of consciousness. That's the entire purpose of the Bible is to show how we evolve. There is no difference between the, the being created and evolution. It's actually one of the same. And we're going to break it on down. Okay. So time is a measurement of consciousness in the cause and effect realm. So for instance, right now, if you take a cup of water and you take it from one side of, of say your desk and you place it over on the other side of the desk, that is actually showing you where you've created it. You've created it multiple infinite times in the space time realm, right? So it's really showing consciousness in 3D form. Okay. So let's begin on the first day of, of creation. The first day in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth and the earth was without form. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. He separated the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So we need to break this on down the first day. The first day considers that we created light, right? Which is really the divided consciousness of the inner world and the outer world. And you can think of this as a bigger picture of creating the universe, but you can also see how you do this all the time. Right now, right here, there is the inner side of yourself and the outer side. You create the division in mind, right? Anytime we create ourselves anything other than the I am, all one with everything, we have a divided consciousness and we create our own limitations, our own disempowerment, our own division in mind, okay? So God, what is God, first of all? God is spirit unity. God is the I am, okay? So the two types of consciousness in this first day are inner and outer. This is the first division in mind. This is the first being of humanness, right? The beginning, we have to recognize that beginning is always first cause. It's the first creation, which is spirit, which is that part of yourself that's the backing, the consciousness of all of it. And heaven, heaven is considered the inner world and earth is considered the outer world. The spirit of God is a creative energy and the water is the essence, which we're going to get into. Okay, we need to get into what the man is and what the woman is and the masculine and feminine and the dawn and all this stuff. Genesis starts at night and in the darkness, which represents the nothingness. Spirit creates from nothing. Many of us will create from the circumstances of our life and reacting to life. But the truth is how you create right now and how we created the entire universe is from nothingness. You at any point in time, no matter what hand dealt, you know, deck of hands you have, deck of cards you have, sorry, whatever you've been dealt in life, you always can create from nothingness. There's infinite, infinite potentials from that. Okay. So the dawn of Genesis is the beginning of manifestation. It's consciousness. Okay. And in this, just to break it on down that in the Genesis, that water represents the soul essence, that part of us that actually just creates exponentially man creates con represents the conscious mind and woman represents the subconscious mind. So you're saying like, why do I care about this? Right? Because this is how you manifest. Okay. You, the, the masculine aspect of yourself is the conscious mind, that part of you that decides it decides right now, right here. And it is the spirit that spears into the subconscious and subjective mind, which is the, the mind of that delivers. That is the universal law. You are creating like a spear in spirit and in, into conscious, you're consciously creating. And in that part of your, yourself, that's feminine part is the subconscious, the soul, that's the mess, that's the, the feminine aspect of it, okay? And then the man is considered the spirit side of it and the woman, and it's not like a man or a woman, it's the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect. The masculine aspect is spirit. The feminine aspect is the soul. And together they birth the body, they birth the baby, they birth this thing called form out here, okay? And this is how you are doing it all the time. The masculine side of yourself that actually is, 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 is planting the seed, right? The feminine side is the womb that just does nothing, just births the baby. 
Okay. That's the part we both have masculine and feminine at all points in time. So this is how it first begins. It first begins in mind. It first begins in the light. It first begins the inner and outer world. Okay. Day two. Day two is what's considered the atmosphere or firmament. Okay. This is where the divided consciousness is with the, with the, um, it's with the subconscious. Okay. So now we have two consciousness. We have the inner and outer, right? Now we have the third and fourth, which is the consciousness and the subconscious. So this states in the second day. And God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters. It may be separated water from water. God made the expanse and it separated water below from the water above. God called this expanse sky. So what does this mean, right? Here's God, you, God, this thing that is creating. And these are these are metaphors. These are things to show you how you create, right? There's something in you that's creating from, from the conscious and the subconscious. There's a part of you that can logically think through everything. And there's something that just automatically happens. Like you don't have to think about beating your heart. That's the subconscious mind. It's that's universal law. It's just taking care of itself, right? We're set, but it's still a consciousness. It's not an unconscious, just subconscious, not unconscious. It's very conscious. It knows exactly what to do. And it does exponential. It does a zillion times more than the conscious mind because it's like little soldiers down there. And it just says yes. And that's all it does. So the second day, the atmosphere and the firmament. Okay. So you need to know that what are you putting into your subconscious mind? Because your subconscious mind is the waters. It's the ripple effect, right? It's that part of yourself that just says, yes, it just says, yes. Okay. So firmament means sky or portal above sky or portal above. This is you. And if you really, when we want to manifest, right, we have to open up our, to the sky, to the portal of spirit, to the true self, to really be in that part of ourselves, right? The water above is human consciousness and the water below is subconsciousness. The two types of consciousness, consciousness and subconsciousness, but they're all one thing working together in the unity of the beautiful thing called manifestation. So let's go to third day third day it stated that dry ground and plants are created right this is really the cause and effect we live in a cause and effect world it says god said let there be water below and sky be gathered into one area that the dry land appear god called the dry land earth and gathered up waters the seas and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, seed bearing plants. So we need to understand how this is being created, right? We understand that with the power of our mind, we can create horrific things and we can also create beautiful things. It is the one mind, it's the cause and effect. We can create everything from dry ground to plants to everything. In this, the earth and gathering of the waters and the sea, that everything sprouts from this vegetation, seed bearing plants, everything from the cause and effect. The first cause is always spirit, it's consciousness, it's you. The effect in this relative universe, we can create heaven, we can create hell, we can create discord, we can create chaos, right? We can create harmony and love it's all one things and it's infinite infinite creations and that's what we get to create so we need to know that there's inside of us there's an involution of evolution there's an involution which is inside we're creating this inside whatever has happened say even nikola tesla before he created something in the physical form he created in his mind first he created inside everything and then the evolution is out there the effect of all the evolving species and everything it's still from the one source it's still the same thing the sea is a collective consciousness and all creation is the division and the divine every last drop of it so we need to know that this is the kind of paradox of life that we live in what really is a non-dualistic you know organism here incredible dynamic thing called life and yet we experience the duality we experience being individuals when we're actually the divine. We experience hell, even though we understand that it's all one, one big thing going on here in, in unison, right? So think about all the infinite creations, all the infinite. This is the thing of, of third day, right? It's understanding the involution and the evolution within is all the involution, how you evolve and how you create within and all the evolution of how you create exponentially through the outer world and how those things evolve because they, they are secondary causations as well. So on the fourth day, God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate day from night. 
They shall serve as signs for the set of times, days, years, and seasons. They shall serve as lights to shine upon the earth. God made two great lights, the greater to dominate the day and the lesser to dominate the night. So the fourth day is all about sun, moon, and stars. The fourth day, we created polarity and cycles, polarity and cycles. And isn't that the point of a day? Isn't that the point of all the astrology to see the cycles, to see the similarities? Isn't that point the point of all of it? Two great lights. There's two great lights, which is sun and moon, which is the polarity. And the thing is, we have to recognize that everything in, in this world is polarized. There can't be good without bad, right? There can't be, you know, one thing without the other. There's always polarity. You're right or you're wrong, right? There's all this polarity of the sun and the moon, and we have this in us. We call this the the father and, and the mother, right? We call this the creation. The sun is the creation and spirit. The moon is the subconscious and subjective mind. This is the part of ourselves, the father and the mother right here right now as us in us not out there god is not out there jesus is not out there the moon and the stars are not out there we are one with them as them times days years seasons are measurement of consciousness and cycles so we create this aspect of ourselves that has cycles that, that literally creates exponentially in polarity how do we create polarity you can instantaneously, the moment that you even consider yourself to be anything other than the I am, you set polarity into motion, right? There has to be a give, there has to be a retake, there has to be receiving and giving. This is all the polarity. You can't, you can't have one without the other. You can't give without receiving. It's impossible. You can't receive without having to give. It's all one thing going on, which is polarity. And this is a dynamic of life that is a great universal law of how we create. On the fifth day, God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and birds that fly above the earth. God bless them saying, be fertile and increase. Be fertile and increase. So on the fifth day, it said that there was birds and sea creatures created. But really what was created was the expansion and multiplicity of the increase, that part that can always multiply exponentially. This is law. It is the law of abundance. It's the law of increase. Fertility means to multiply and evolution, the secondary causation of creation. So all the species, all the different creatures are just all from one creation, but they evolve. So creation and evolution are the same thing. There's no difference. It's just how we've evolved exponentially. And so may you be fertile. May you know that whatever you put your energy into you will multiply exponentially. We teach this all the time. If you energize what you don't want, you'll have more of what you don't want. If you energize what you do want, you'll have more of what you do want. This is law. This is the expansion and multiplicity of increase. And on day six, God said, let the earth bring forth every kind of living creature, cattle, creeping things, and wild beasts and every kind. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeliness. They shall rule the fish, the birds, cattle, whole earth. God bless them and said, be fertile and increase. God said, behold, I have given you every seed bearing plant, tree, animal, bird, green plants. This is the truth. The truth is that there are unique divine expressions. And in this are created as, as the image of God after the likeliness, right? We are God. We're just a reflection. We get to create exponentially, infinitely. We have, as Jesus said, you too will do greater things than I, right? Jesus is God. You're God. We're God. There's no difference. We're all the one I am in the infinite, infinite relative experience right here, right now. And we have every single mathematical equation possible. Thomas Troy was a great teacher of this. He gave two great examples of having a ship that goes over water, recognizing that steel will, will, it won't float, it will sink. But if you build it big enough, and it will actually go across the water and float. And that's the innovation. That's the, that's the infinite, infinite creations that we can create. He also uses the airplane, you know, steel can't fly in the air, but if you put it with a propeller and you create an engine and you have, you know, gravity and you have wind and you have all this stuff, it creates this thing called being able to fly an airplane. Everything we ever need is already here. We've created everything, 
all the core elements, but in those elements, there's infinite, infinite mathematical equations of everything we could ever want to create, everything from more plants, more trees, and innovations and inventions, everything you could ever imagine, beyond anything you can imagine, that this is in the image and likeliness of God, mentally one mind. We are. There's only one mind, it's the divine mind. And the only thing that can limit you from being the God that you are is your own thinking. This is the truth of your unique divine expression that you infinitely, we can infinitely create infinitely as unique fractals of God as well. So the seventh day, the seventh day, on the seventh day, God finished all the work he had been doing. He rested from all the work he had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. So what does this mean exactly? They say this is a Sabbath of rest. This is the holy one meaning that if you really truly get to true creation, you can just be whole with everything. There's no effort. There's no increase. There's no nothing. You just are. You are back to the I am, the holy one unity. And in recognizing this, you create everything, everything, and you're creating it now. There's no effort. There's no, I want to manifest this. There's no, I got to have a goal. There's none of that. There's simply resting and being as the Holy One. And in this, this is all of it summed up into one thing. And so I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful for the great teachers. Thomas Strode was a great teacher of understanding, breaking down all the biblical teachings. Thomas Strode was a judge over in the East who was also Christian and was able to help many people like me and many others in the new thought, ancient wisdom and metaphysical world break on down what this means exactly. The Bible, he says, the Bible contemplates man as composed of spirit, soul, and body. In other words, as combined a single unity in a threefold nature, spiritual, psychic, and corporeal. The point is that the entire Bible is teaching us the creative process. The Bible, the entire thing is teaching us how we create in harmony and in chaos, how we infinitely create. This is the entire thing of the Bible. And so we want to break down again, what is the promise? The promise of the Bible is emancipation of man. Okay, and I'm talking about a man as in the man versus a woman, emancipation of, of being human, emancipation, delivering us to our immortality, delivering us to our eternality, delivering us from sorrow, sickness, from poverty, from struggle, from uncertainty, from ignorance and limitation, and finally from death itself. So the promise is acquiring certain information and the promise results are all contingent on our getting, interpreting and using the information. So we need to get it right? You can have the Bible for your whole life and it doesn't do any of this. Okay. But it's how you actually interpret it and then actually how you implement it and use it and embody it. Okay. This is the promise. So wisdom equals freedom. Ignorance equals suffering. And these are all the truism. The truisms, the truisms in the Bible is that the only thing that can limit is the thought that gave rise to the condition. So as God thyself, as divine thyself, as the infinite creator that you are, you can infinitely create scarcity. You can infinitely create chaos. You can infinitely create division. You can infinitely create war. And it's the same exact energy that can create love and harmony and abundance and every last drop you ever could desire whatsoever. This is the truism. The truism of the Bible is teaching that how only your thought can give the condition of, of being uh, a prisoner. Uh, the condition of everything. There's only one thought. And so we have to understand that the Trinity in the Bible is spirit, soul, body. The Trinity is spiritual, psychic, and, and physical, God, man, universe, that this is the Trinity. We're, we're learning this. We're learning that there's one thing, it's spirit. Spirit is the masculine aspect. Spirit is that part that is, that is the spear that is going into and, and creating and it goes into the soul the feminine aspect of each and every one of us the one soul and it impregnates the soul with the thought and the soul takes it into the subjective mind into that intelligence and uses and is the universal law and it projects out into form in the world as the experience as the thing as the body as whatever and through the spirit and the soul it creates the body the actual physical 3d experience of all of it okay so we have to recognize there's two great psychological laws to the Bible, which is the creative power of thought and the amenability of thought to control by suggestion. 
So we have a responsibility. In fact, we're just doing this in ministry about ethics. And the truth is that we have to be responsible that not only for our thoughts, but what we impinge and, and penetrate into other people's consciousness. There's a responsibility, especially as a minister, of having ethical responsibility to stay neutral in our influence. This is why the Bible veils its ultimate meaning under symbols, allegories, and parables, so that you, at your own consciousness, too, can reveal yourself and where you are in your own consciousness. If someone comes in and says, this is how enlightenment is, you may actually have resistance. It might hurt somebody in their awakening, right? So even as spiritualists, we do that all the time. We'll be going down our spiritual nature, and you've, we've all met that person or we've been that person that we coach every single person we're in front of and people begin to roll their eyes at us and they actually turned off from it. So as anyone who's seeking truth that is really a revealer of truth, my suggestion and invitation is to stay neutral, to allow the teachings themselves to penetrate. I know the people that came to listen to this podcast came here because they chose to come here. I won't force it on you and tell you whatever. You come here for a reason. You've been called to this for a reason. And I'm here to just display this perception of it, okay? So again, creation versus evolution. The Bible reveals how creation is a process of evolution. There's involution and evolution, right? There's the inner, the inner creation and evolution is the outer creation, okay? So involution is a spiritual and mental realm. The passing of spirit into form as an an in the consciousness, right? It's passing through consciousness, right? The evolution is the physical evolution. It's the, it's the physical realm. Involution and evolution are not opposed to one another. They are only earlier and later stages of the same process. The perpetual urging onward of spirit for self-expression in infinite varieties of form. The creation and evolution are one. So in day one through three of the six days of creation is all involution. Day four through six is evolution. And four, day seven is holy unity of both coming together. And so the stories in the Bible are about the individual parts of the whole, the body, the soul, the spirit, and just knowing the triune nature. The Bible teaches the triune nature. It teaches emancipation from suffering and it teaches great laws. So why would we want to know that? Because we want to know, we want to be free. We want to be empowered. We want to be able to create exponentially. We want to turn on our superpowers. We want to understand how how we're creating all of it. And so in this, I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am knowing that you are the divine creator. You are the power. You are the force. You are that essence. You are the Christ consciousness. You are the second coming. You are that that we've been waiting for. I recognize right now the power of the Bible, the story of you, the revealing to thyself and all the dynamics that you can play out, all the victim and being the perpetrator and being the, you know, having enough courage and also being the all, you know, manipulate all those things, all the characters, all the scriptures that you are in this book. You are this book you wrote this book because god wrote this book it doesn't matter if who wrote it who didn't write it where what's real what's not real i'm not a biblical historian i am somebody who's here to teach the truth of the bible which is the truth of you and so i just say thank you thank you thank you and if you are somebody who's had a spiritual calling and desire to really get trained as a minister, as a metaphysical minister. I invite you to come into our community. I invite you to come into to Spiritual Warrior and just begin to do the transformation and all that work. We have um, different levels in our community, everything from being a spiritual warrior. We have entrepreneur programs that are based for spiritually based um, entrepreneurs. We also have coaching programs that teach the E4 trauma method and, um, and uh, master spiritual psychology coach. And then we have spiritual practitioners that really learn the creative process and metaphysics and universal law. And then we have the ministry um, program, which is all about metaphysics of, of all of it, of understanding the Bible and different religions and philosophies and science, really being able to be somebody who is able to preach, being able to be somebody who's able to teach it all. And then last Lastly, we have Doctor of Divinity. So we have six levels again, spiritual warrior, spiritual entrepreneur, spiritual coach, spiritual practitioner, um, metaphysical uh, minister, and Doctor of Divinity. So you're welcome to reach out. I'll put a link below. We have discovery and breakthrough calls um, once a week as well. I'll put it on here for you to come. We can, I'll be there live myself most likely because um, I do it once a week and I cannot wait to meet you. Have a beautiful day and may you live your truth.